think they're so superior than everybody else. I don't think I'm better than you. You think that if you're vulnerable for one second, it's gonna come crashing down. Oh my God, my baby's drowning! What are we gonna like hug and wrap this up? How does this end? My biological clock is ticking like this! Penelope Cruz? Oh. Boys. Do you think LGBTQ representation differs between now and when you were growing up? Oh, so it really differs because there was no representation. Um, I mean, we were practically invisible. And whenever we would appear, it would be either to um, be the butt of a joke or something really derogatory. You know, I think um, even our presence in in a very nuanced way as well is such a gift like it, it's so new to me um and i think that it's really important to continue in this in this way of like showing these stories because they're really really valuable but yeah we didn't have anything like this when i was growing up at all what impact do you think current representation has on lgbtq youth who are growing up now I think it has a really big impact uh, because when you feel seen, you feel safe. And there's something about that that really holds a lot of meaning. Um, you know, the, the, the power of visibility, I think, is really, uh, it's something that we're just learning to understand because we haven't been seen for so long. And um, as Asian Americans here, like, our invisibility throughout sort of like the American history has been just the one constant of our identity. It's just the fact that we, we weren't there to be seen, but we have been here. We've been here since 1849 and a big part of America, yet for whatever reason, uh, that's sort of been lost. And so now we can construct that. And not only that, we can construct it through a queer lens, which is even more important because um, being queer and Asian is to be the the most invisible amongst the invisible. Like we're like, you know, always told like I think in a lot of Asian cultures that queer people don't exist, and that's really the 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 worst kind of punishment to feel like we're not seen even among the unseen. I think what I would love for people to recognize from the film is that even though you're gay, it doesn't mean you're, you can't be racist or sexist or homophobic or, um, you know, any of these biases that exist. Because I think a lot of times when we're from an oppressed community, we can't imagine that we would oppress others, but we do. And to look within and to eradicate those biases, I think, is a really important thing. So I think ultimately that's what the film is, is, is kind of looking within our own biases about who we are and um, shifting that with what is love. And I think that's a really beautiful way. Really, and quality is more important than quantity when it comes to LGBTQ plus representation in film and media. I think both are important. I think quality and quantity. I think that it would be great to uh, sort of like entertain the idea that our appearance could be somehow unexceptional, but it has to be. The thing is, is that, you know, what, whatever it is, when you're queer, your art has to be so exceptional to survive or to even get noticed that it's it's almost like always gonna be great no matter what it is. Because we have to endure so much scrutiny because of our identity to even get to places to show off what we can do. So it's um, just by the, the, the homophobia at large that exists that, um, you know, we have to be exceptional to be seen. So I, I don't know, I would love that point of visibility where we can sort of take for granted um, that our stories are just part of what we get to see all the time, but we don't yet. I don't think we're there yet. I'm not sure if I'll even be able to see that. 
As you know, state legislatures across our country are passing bills to censor any mention of LGBTQ identity or sexual orientation. And I just want to get your thoughts on this anti-LGBTQ legislation we've been seeing and what we can do to combat it. I think we can combat that by telling our stories and it's frightening the kind of silencing that exists uh, around our stories, our truth. It's really, it's just a real, it, it's a real shame. You know, we have, uh, we have to fight with our own truth and our own um, worth to ourselves. You know, I, I think it's just a very uh, difficult time um, but I look at, I look at it as a challenge that we have to face. I mean, we have gone through so many changes as a community to be able to handle different levels of discrimination. And now we have to use all the things that we've learned through the AIDS crisis, through uh, being able to change people's perspective around queer lives. I think we have to continue to fight. I think that uh, there's a lot of similarities between Erin and myself. And I, I think that also, you know, she just um, is different in that she has sort of a different path, path in life. And she's quite, she's quite burned a lot of her bridges with her friends. And so now it's like kind of almost forced to be friends with a lot of younger people that she can kind of control the relationship a little bit more, which I think is not really my story um but i think one of the things that's true is that when you're gay you're gay forever and so you're gay with the same people forever so you have to be nice to other people you're gay with you can't just be gay in um, isolation you have to be gay in a group and so there's like a lot of things that she's done that are really um really hard that's sort of the consequences that she's sort of living now and um for me, like, I, I totally understand that. Like I've had uh, bad relationships and then some of those wounds don't heal. Um, some fights I've had with women since like 2003 are still going on, you know, and it's almost 20 years later. So it's a really interesting thing about how, um, you know, when we're in our communities, we have to be respectful of our own communities while we're alive in them and while we're going on with them. Cause it's a, you know, it's a long road to hope. Uh, speaking from personal experience, I feel like a lot of LGBTQ individuals have a mentor to help guide them through life's challenges and uh, navigating our identity. And I just want to ask you, why is this role so important within the LGBTQ community especially? I think you always need a mentor because you need to be able to figure out how you're going to do this, you know, and, and in queer culture, a lot of times we're... Um, sort of not necessarily as close with our biological families and so we need to seek family outside of that and you know a queer mentor can really show you how to navigate a non-queer world and it's a life-saving position to be in to be in that sort of gay elder place and a lot of times i think too we're limited for choices and a lot of gay men who would be elders now died during the AIDS crisis. And so we're missing a rung, like a ladder in our society where we have to sort of overreach to, to fill the gaps, um, to figure out like, where are we gonna get that elder wisdom from? And so I think it's a really, mentoring, um, being an elder in the gay community, those things are really, really important. Oh yeah, I mean, I think it's just also like, she has total auntie energy. So she likes to tell people what to do and how to do it. And like, but in a loving way that um, can be a little bit like intrusive at times, but also very much in the spirit of like, she just wants the best for you. So I think um, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of the sort of like Asian auntie, perspective there's a lot of the, the elder lesbian perspective and there's a lot of the queer family dynamic in the character and in their lives 
If you could give your younger self any advice regarding the experience of building a career in the entertainment industry as a minority, what would that advice be? I think it would just be to keep telling your story, keep on um, enjoying the journey because there there really is, um, we're just sort of building it now and it has to be enjoyable to uh, be worthwhile. And so I think it's really like, don't worry so much, just relax and enjoy. Um, I think that the future is queer and Asian. And I think that you, you children are our future. <laughs> when you're gay, you're gay forever. And so you're gay with the same people <laughs> forever. So you have to be nice to other people you're gay with. You can't just be gay in um, isolation. You have to be gay in a group. She has total auntie energy. So she likes to tell people what to do and how to do it. And like, but in a loving way.